Welcome to Food and Facilities, an online show and podcast for all safety, compliance, and innovation news for manufacturing, agriculture, food processing, and food and beverage industries. In this episode, we'll be discussing farming for the future with Lakeisha Martin of African American Farmers of California, Alad Sagal of Drift Sense, and Vicki Espinoza of Cali Water Ag. Welcome to Food and Facilities. I'm Tara Sweeney. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube and anywhere you listen to podcasts and follow us on LinkedIn. Make sure to reach out to our sponsor, FacilitiesExpo.com, in Northern California Facilities Expo, October 27th to 28th. For exhibiting information and questions, you can contact Lisa Nagel at L-N-A-G-L-E at FacilitiesExpo, F-A-C-I-L-I-T-I-E-S-E-X-P-O.com, or you can give her a call at 408-829-5111. The Facilities Expo, where facility challenges find solutions. And my first guest today is Lakeisha Martin. She's the Vice President of African American Farmers of California, and you can reach her at African American Farmers of CA at gmail.com. Lakeisha? Hi, everybody. Um, Tara, thank you for having us um, as an organization. Um, I am currently the Vice President of African American Farmers. Um, African American Farmers was founded in 1997 by our current president, um, Mr. Will Scott. The of African American Farmers is to increase the awareness of, um, within the African American community um, about resources when it comes to farming and more or less get back into the groove of things mm-hmm. how it relates to our culture. And you do things like that by training growers and people in the community that are interested in becoming growers? Yes. So um, our current group of um, African-American farmers, um, not everybody is a farmer. Me personally, I'm not a farmer, but um, we are working on getting, uh, again, getting more people involved in the agriculture industry. Um, as you guys are aware, the people of color, are. It's not. there's not a dominant effect in the ag industry, but um, we are definitely in tune with um, the concept of consuming healthy things. So um, we are um, willing and wanting to provide um, newcoming farmers and established farmers with the resources to um, to learn the concept of farming and to um, hone in on different skills that they're not necessarily aware of. And you have monthly meetings at the nearby Kearney Park, is that correct? Yes. So we do meet every second Thursday of the month. Um, and we're kind of like in a weird position because we were meeting outside practicing social distancing and things like that due to the weather. But as the weather is changing, our location will change as well. But we do meet every second Thursday of the month at 530. Um, and our demonstration site, we have a uh, 16-acre demonstration site that is located at the intersection of FAIR and um, California. So if you just follow the, um, the palm trees down California, you'll be able to find it. Um, and it is located right behind Kearney Park. And if organizations wanted to collaborate with you, what kinds of equipment or resources could they provide you with? Um, honestly, um, we are open to a lot of things. Um, our demonstration site, we currently were granted what we would call the Healthy Soils Grant. So um, our goal for this year is to the remaining of the year and for the years coming is to revamp that demonstration site. Um, So we are very open to anything, whether it's washing facilities, tractors, um, any type of farming equipment, that's something that we're always wanting and always welcoming. And prior to COVID, you participated in a CSA and farmer's market in Oakland? Yes. Um, So a lot of our farmers, um, they are bringing their produce, they're obviously harvesting their produce and then um, taking it to different areas as it is requested. 
And what are some new projects that you've been working on along with Healthy Soils? Uh, at this point, we are solely focusing on um, getting the organization um, more known. Um, we've been honing in on the concept of an integrating technology like social media, um, getting the website and everything going. Um, I feel like, um, as we've all kind of stated, is that 2020 has been our opportunity for growth. Um, we've had our African American Farmers um, Conference in February, and so we were able to kind of, you know, lay out our plans. Um, and as of lately, we've been putting those into action. So hopefully, as we progress um, in in lieu of the um, Healthy Soils Grant, we'll be able to demonstrate um, all the progress that we have um, been able to do over the last year. And is there anything else that you'd like to share about your organization? Um, the biggest thing that I would say is that we are always wanting and welcoming more members. Um, if you um, are somebody who has resources and you would like to share them with us, um, whether it's funding or if it's just sources of, um, you know, information about a new variety of a seed or something, um, we're always welcoming those things. We're a group that is wanting to learn and wanting to give back to our community. And we ask that the community also keeps us in mind as well. And then if they wanted to reach out and connect with you, how would they reach you? Uh, the greatest way to connect with us is utilizing um, our Facebook page. Uh, you guys can all follow us at African American Farmers of California. Um, and California is spelled all the way out. Um, or you can email me and the emails come directly to me at African American Farmers of California, CA at gmail.com. And where I will respond that way. Um, or you can give us um, on the Facebook page, there's also a phone number as well. Well, thank you for taking time with me today, Lakeisha. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's it. Thank you for having us. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. I'm here with my guest, Avad Sigal of DriftSense, and he's going to be discussing his venture. And Avad, can you give us a little background about yourself and a few words about DriftSense? Yes, sure. Um... Thank you very much, Tara, for having me, and good morning, good evening here in Israel. So uh, my name is Elad Sega. I am the CEO and co-founder of DriftSense, alongside Dr. Ron Shauli, our Chief Operational Officer, and Dr. Pavel Kunin, our Chief Technology Officer. Uh, we are three co-founders with expertise in the field of uh, material science, chemistry, and environmental policy, and, numer and numerical weather prediction. Uh, our company focuses on optimizing pesticide drift application, and its accuracy while minimizing pesticide drift in order to avoid injury to susceptible crops, human, and of course, the natural environment. Um, our technology is based on algorithms and scientific models to build a profile for each and every field plot, which is tailor fitted to the grower based on his or her specification. Um, we use data analytics and science to help our growers make decisions which are suited to their needs rather than flooding them with unnecessary information. What challenge does your company try to solve? Well, that's well, a good question, Tara. Inaccurate pesticide application is causing many problems to growers worldwide. We know that today growers lose in average more than 75% of their pesticide spraying application simply because there are so many parameters that affect it. Um, meteorology, chemical properties, volatility of pesticides and fertilizers, and of course, the local regulatory boundaries. In addition to the above mentioned, it's not enough. If it's not enough, we have also climate change that brings pest resistance growth, uh, the needs of using higher volumes and concentrations of materials, which are major concerns. Well, eventually, non-optimal application timing is a crucial factor in this scope, uh, which we aim to solve. What is the value proposition you offer potential customers and stakeholders? Yes. yes, so by building a plot-specific profile and optimizing the spraying schedule and accuracy, we at Rift Sales, we help growers to save their crops, reduce uh, uh, the pest control expenses, slow down eventually the pest resistance, and refrain from legal consequences of drift and damages to neighbors and the environment. We understand that growers have a very tight schedule with a lot of constraints, including irrigation, harvest, re entries and so on and so forth. Eventually, optimizing resources and spraying operation leads to reduction in costs and efficient risk management. What is your call for food growers and 
food processors and farm managers that are watching this interview? Yes. So we develop, we're actually developing our, our platform with growers, applicators, and experts in agriculture. We do so because we know that they are full partners in our journey. Uh, providing an overload of information is useless, especially, especially if there is no actionable item uh, in the decision-making process. So we ask growers, applicators, PCAs, uh, food processing companies to contact us so we could learn about their challenges and needs uh, and how we at Driftsend can fit our platform to their challenges because their opinion is highly uh, evaluated. What kind of resources does DriftSense need to be able to do what you want to do? Yes, yeah, so not much. We're usually having an onboarding meeting with the growers or, or the uh, field manager and so on and so forth. We need to understand exactly uh, with what specification they are using, what instrumentation, the materials, the formulations, the type of crop that they are using, all of their, so to speak, DNA, uh, build, we build a plot specific um, platform. We, in each and every plot, we tell or we recommend the growers what would be the most efficient timing for them to spray. And it can only be done if we have uh, a, a major set of parameters. We give a, a holistic approach saying that within a very high res meteorology with your materials, with your crops and instrumentation, nozzles and many, many other parameters, we could exactly know what is the most valuable uh, timing for you to spray. At the end of the day, uh, we need to understand that uh, there are so many parameters within, the, uh, within our scope that we need to use a few segmentations of technology. There are actually two. One are our physical mathematical modeling, which is a uh, um, our bread and butter for, for our CTO, uh, Dr. Pavel Kunin, he is in this uh, uh, scope for more than 15 years. And we take these outputs into algorithms, into machine learning algorithms, and we make the optimization specifically for the grower, for his plots, and so on and so forth. As we say at Driftons, there are no two uh, identical growers in this world whatsoever. If you, even if you're using, both growers are using the same materials, uh, growing the same crop, uh, living maybe, I don't know, uh, a half a mile one, one from another, there are still many differences between one to another that we could give different recommendations for each and every one of them. So it's, it's very important. And if our viewers and listeners wanted to get a hold of you, how would they reach you? So they can hop into our uh, website. It's www.drift-sense.com. Dot com. They could also contact us on LinkedIn and just uh, at the search bar, click Drift Sense. Um, also by email, of course, it's contact at drift-sense.com and we're available in all of these three platforms. I'm here with Vicki Espinoza of Cali Water Ag, and she's here Save to discuss the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act with us today. Vicki? Hi, thank you so much for the introduction and thank you for having me today, Kara. I'm excited to talk about Cali Water Ag and my doctoral work concerning Sigma and its implications on agricultural land in the San Joaquin Valley. Can you give us a little background on yourself and Cali Water Ag and why you decided to start such an informational video series? So I'm a, currently a PhD candidate at UC Merced, and my doctoral work focuses on addressing how Sigma could impact agricultural land and how these land use changes could impact our communities and farmers throughout the San Joaquin Valley. Um, so many studies have projected that more than 10% of agricultural land could go out of production to address groundwater overdraft by 2040, as per Sigma. Um, so taking land out, out of production is difficult and is something that can't be done randomly um, since there are impacts to people's livelihoods and the economy. Um, so my work addresses how and where um, this could happen in a way that minimizes impacts to already vulnerable communities and farmers in the valley. And Kylie Water Egg is a kind of a byproduct of this work because of this work or the model that I'm creating takes community and farmer input to help inform 
the types of land use distributions or the types of land uses that community members and farmers would like to see in and around their communities. And I was invited to be a panelist at the Latino Farmer Conference two years ago. And I was in disbelief in just knowing that a lot of our Latino farmers, most of them with groundwater dependent operations did not know much about Sigma. And so some of them asked me to visit with them at their ranch or their farm. And I gave them a Spanish workshop on Sigma. So it all began really with these um, organizing these workshops, these in-person workshops. Uh, due to COVID, Cali Water Ag was a result. So continue to do outreach through this YouTube channel. Do you see language as a major barrier in access to information and resources for Sigma? Um, that is a, a limitation at the moment. Um, you know, there a lot of the information is available in English. And if there are translations, which there are some out there, it's usually embedded within English language content. So it's fairly difficult for someone uh, that's monolingual to find these resources. What are some of the main barriers that you've noticed with growers having more information on Sigma and the issues with being able to be compliant with it? Yeah, some of the limitations are in, in terms of information access would be um, particularly with our monolingual or small scale farmers that aren't really in the loop with irrigation districts or their GSA. Um, there is a lot of broadband limitation throughout the valley. And so access or communication through the web or through email is just not something that is accessible for, for some people. Um, through hundreds of conversations with community members and farmers, um, I've learned that in-person and mail-in forms are, are the most helpful for them or the most preferred. What kind of resources do you need to be able to help more people? So um, I would love to continue growing Cali Water Ag and continue creating videos not that, that go beyond Sigma. So this channel is to foster a better understanding of science and policy behind water and land use management. Um, so in moving forward and creating more material, um, trilingual material, so the channel is now trilingual, there's English, Spanish, and Hmong, um, a lot of the resources need to go through funding the translations of these videos. And um, yeah, I would, I would love to move forward and continue, continue providing this information for our Latino and Hmong community members. What is something you wish more people knew about the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act? I would love people to understand that Sigma is a tool that is helping us address a key issue here in California and throughout the Valley, and that is groundwater overdraft. So it's really creating an opportunity for how we think about management of our water and our land so that we can address this uh, very critical issue, which is groundwater overdraft. I know a lot of growers and citizens in California have seen the issues with drought and how overdraft can play a role in that. For land use, do you have any specific suggestions to help with Sigma compliance? That's something that my work aims to address is how to strategize or provide some sort of insight of where different land uses could um, be ideal or optimal for implementation. And that's based on climate, it's based off of user or community preference, which is something that's new, at least for this model. Um, soil type, crop type, water requirements, and the water amounts within regions. Um, I would suggest at least the video, the Cali Water Ag video, the fourth video goes through a couple of options that have been considered. So that's just out there for people to consider the potential options. Um, there's nothing concrete into favoring one or the other. A lot of these multi-benefit um, options allow growers to implement it along with their agriculture. Um, so implementing it on, piece, on a piece of their land or to work with whatever crops they're growing. Are there any sustainable or generative um, methods that you've seen that have been especially helpful with this? You know, I've seen the implementation and there are studies being done on the implementation of flood managed aquifer recharge on orchards. 
and that is just depending on the type, the soil type, um, and whether the trees are able to um, sustain themselves in saturated conditions. Um, so there's a lot of work being done around flood managed aquifer recharge, also with the implementation of cover crops. Um, that's another one that's being talked about quite often nowadays. Is there anything else that you would like to share before we wrap up for today? Yes, I would love to encourage our um, farmers and community members to really learn about the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act and for them to know that they too can have a say in informing these groundwater sustainability plans. These plans are not set in stone. They're gonna be changing according to what is working and what isn't working within the next five to 20 years. So I, I encourage them to become involved, to have a say in it, to give their opinions and their lived experiences because they are valuable. If our listeners and viewers wanted to collaborate with you, how would they best get in contact with you? If they want to do a collaboration um, on a video, they can go ahead and email me at caliwaterag at gmail.com. Um, so that's C-A-L-I-W-A-T-E-R ag at gmail.com. Thank you for meeting with me today, Vicki. I hope you have a good day. Thank you so much for having me. Watch us live on centralvalleytalk.com Saturdays 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for all agribusiness safety and compliance news covering agriculture, food processing, food and beverage, and manufacturing, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and anywhere you listen to podcasts and follow us on LinkedIn. We will now have a moment of silence for our Black Lives Matter community.